This despite the Supreme Court order which doesn't make it mandatory to name the father, either for admissions or for passports. My son is born out of, through IVF, uh, with uh, anonymous donor sperm. So, um, I don't have a father to declare for my son. So, it's not the first time. Other schools also, reputed schools, rejected our application. Some schools we could not even apply because, you know, uh, even for an online registration, you need the father's name and picture. So, every time I did, could not put one, I mean, a name I could put not applicable, but if I didn't put a picture, it got rejected. So, But this was the ultimate because what happened was when I submitted the application, they immediately asked me for a legal document to prove that I'm single parent. So, a single mother. So, I said, look, uh, the birth certificate is there. It just has my name. Um, there is no higher legal document than that uh, for a four-year-old. Then they said, um, no, but uh, you have to give more le a legal documents. I said, I can't prove I'm legally single. Widowed, divorced, yes. Single? I don't think there exists any such thing. I said, okay, ma'am, you give it in writing to the principal. So I actually wrote everything, all the details, how he was born and all, in a letter and said, gave it uh, along with my application. This was on 1st December. 6th December, I get a call saying, ma'am, you have to give your hospital papers. Hospital papers I was not very comfortable giving because there are a lot of personal details out there which I do not want. A school has nothing to do with it. And, you know, my details about my uh, myself. Uh, but I still gave them uh, because it has basically his name and my name there. Eighth, again I get a call saying none of those papers are enough. You have to give a legal affidavit declaring, the, I mean quote unquote, they said the child has no father and how he was born. And then I put my foot down because this was, all this was actually a violation of the 2015 uh, Supreme Court verdict. Uh, judgment, which said that you cannot ask for, uh, you know, a father's name. Well, that of, that of course is the plight of this family, despite the, f the fact that the Supreme Court back in 2015 had very clearly said that uh, the, the mother need not uh, reveal the identity of the father. In this case, uh, this woman had the child through IVF. And the Supreme Court, in fact, uh, guarantees her the right uh, to admit her child to a school. And the, the school, in, in particular, cannot ask for permission, uh, cannot ask for the name of the father if the mother does not want to reveal one. We're moving on to a now a truly bizarre diktat. The government of India has issued an advisory asking all television channels not to air condom advertisements between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. The INB ministry said that some channels carry ads of condoms repeatedly, which are alleged to be indecent, especially for children. This move came in after the Advertising Standards Council of India had requested the INB ministry earlier this month to take a call on such ads and their telecast timing. Well, this is a decision that's been taken uh, by uh, the union information and broadcasting ministry. Uh, the minister, Smriti Irani, that uh, in fact... Uh, advising all P all uh, television channels not to carry these ads between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. because uh, uh, this could, they say, uh, affect children because some of these ads, according to the ministry, are indecent. Therefore, they should not be watched by children. Well, over to some news coming in from Kerala. 13 boats and 111 fishermen who went missing due to Cyclone Oki returned to shore in Kochi last evening. This after thousands of people, family members and family members of the missing fishermen protested on the streets against the government inaction. Well, uh, the return of the, fa of the farmers, of course, is uh, good news for, uh, for some of the families because, remember, uh, there have been protests not just in Kerala but also in Tamil Nadu uh, because, the, because a number of fishermen who, in fact, had gone to sea when uh, Cyclone Oki hit were not able to come back, they, you know, despite the fact that there were, uh, you know, an effort from uh, the Air Force as well as the Navy as well as the Coast Guard to try and rescue these fishermen. There were a number of people who are yet to be rescued. Remember, these are small, uh, sometimes very small fishing trawlers or fishing boats who went out to sea uh, and who were really caught up in Cyclone Oki. But uh, days after, of course, uh, the cyclone hit, 
they finally managed to come home. 111 of these uh, fishermen are back now. They've reached the Kochi coast and will return to their families. Let's, let's shift focus now to Maharashtra, where the Maha winter session in Nagpur, the opposition plans to corner the BJP-led government. Farmers and opposition parties are likely to protest. Now, the focus on slow implementation of loan waivers and cotton, soya bean and paddy farmers issues are topping the agenda. The opposition parties are holding a combined protest called the Halla Bol Andolan from Diksha Bhumi to Vidhan Bhavan. NCP is calling it Halla Bol and the Congress is calling it Jan Akrosh. Well, that's, uh, of course, uh, you know, the farmers as well as opposition, opposition parties digging in, trying to target the Fadnavis government. Remember, uh, today marks the beginning of the winter session of the Maharashtra Assembly, which take pla takes place in Nagpur. And farmers have already, in fact, uh, targeted the, the, the government over what they call anti-farmer issues. Those are going to be raised once again uh, this time. Uh, let's go across now to Mandar Fanse, who's joining us live from Nagpur. Uh, Mandar, we, we're seeing, uh, of course, farmer leaders have been intensifying their protests, but opposition parties today are going to lend their voice. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you can just see now a large number of people have started gathering around this particular area. This is uh, Diksha Bhumi in Nagpur, which is an iconic place uh, where uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar has uh, uh, got converted his 60,000 followers uh, uh, to Buddhism. And this is this happens to be the most iconic place in uh, Nagpur. From this place to the Vidhan Bhavan, people will march uh, uh, over a period of uh, another two, three hours. And, and then uh, uh, these two uh, main political parties, Parties which are in opposition, uh, NCP and Congress, both will uh, uh, both have already started the rallies. Especially the NCP, who has called the Hallabol uh, rally, uh, which has begun almost a uh, month back for, from Yavatmal, which is a uh, farm suicide belt. And and uh, uh, this Hallabol rally and the Jana Akros rally of Congress and another uh, five to six uh, small time uh, 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 political parties in opposition in Maharashtra, they will uh, converge together. Uh, rally towards uh, all these uh, areas of uh, Vidhan Bhavar and obviously these are the main areas where uh, uh, obviously uh, the farmers uh, are expecting a lot from the government especially when there is uh, a great deal of anger uh, about the disbursement uh, patterns of the farmers farm loan waivers and, and uh, apart from that the the prices of the uh, farm good, especially the purses and paddy and uh, uh, soybean. Uh, all these farm prices are steeply uh, going uh, uh, down since since almost last three four years uh, put together. So obviously the farmers are in great distress and uh, uh, and therefore this particular rally is expected to uh, cater to a large number of uh, crowd. And uh, apart from this. Uh, 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 Supriya Sule, uh, who would start uh, her own, I mean, uh, the, the NCP's Hallabol rally from this place, she will come uh, uh, in, a, in a while from the from uh, to the to, to the Diksha Bhumi, and then they will start uh, this particular match, uh, uh, march uh, of Hallabol towards uh, the Vidhan Bhavan area, and and of course at around two o'clock, uh, Mr. Sharad Pawar is uh, going to lead the whole bunch of the rally, and and then he is supposed to address the rally uh, at the Vidhan Bhavan. Well, absolutely, Bandar, and uh, you know, just to get into the specifics, of course, of uh, of what's really going to take place, because uh, the, the Maharashtra government, remember, has already announced a farm loan waiver. What has been some of the problems uh, which uh, the farmers have been highlighting, despite the fact that the uh, farm loan waiver has been announced by the Maharashtra government? There were a series of problems with it because uh, uh, as as the declaration of the farm loan waivers has happened in the month of June uh, 8, uh, obviously the, the expected uh, returns to the uh, uh, farmers were uh, around in the month of uh, maximum to, uh, till the end of the August, but but that has not happened. Even till today, uh, the farm loan waivers are being disbursed and, and most of the farmers, uh, they are claiming they, are, they haven't received their uh, uh, amount of 1.5 lakh rupees around uh, loan waivers. So, so obviously there is some problem some bureaucratic uh, uh, goof ups and especially when it comes to the uh, various riders of the farm loan waivers those riders have uh, 
weeded out most of the people uh, and especially uh, when it comes to the farmers uh, uh, who, who were eligible for these particular loans uh, they they uh, they were completely weeded out and there's a bunch of uh, farmers around uh, 12 to 13 lakh farmers uh, uh, who have been shortlisted now who are uh, being eligible for this particular loan waivers uh, will receive now around 8500 crore rupees worth of uh, amount uh, as as government is claiming the that particular amount of 8500 crore rupees is already disbursed to the banks and through the banks uh, this particular loans uh, loan waivers will come to the farmers but there are n number of issues uh, uh, attached to this because uh, most of the loan uh, loans uh, uh, are are uh, against the hypothecation of the land of the farmers so so obviously uh, even of uh, even after these particular loan waivers farmers are not uh, really getting the, the the respite because their lands are not ge uh, getting cleared from okay we've got some trouble there with uh, mandar's link we'll try and reconnect with him but meanwhile i've got on the phone line mr vijay uh, jawandia who is the founder member of the uh, shetkari sangathan nagpur let's go across to him uh, mr jawandia thanks so much for speaking to us uh, you know we're seeing the farmers uh, in fact protest in uh, against this government over the last few weeks now political parties are of course also going to target uh, the government what are some of the issues that uh, that that you are seeing the farmers face in the state so the issues are the same i think uh, the, the 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 major issue is that whatever farm lo loan waiver is announced that is not yet implemented properly. Yesterday only I read somewhere the chief minister is saying that uh, they have dispersed about uh, 19,000 crore rupees or something like that. And the total announcement was 34,000 crore rupees. But uh, the, still the money is not reached to the accounts of the farms, farm, farmers. And this is this delay, I am afraid that if this is not completed before April or May, then farmer will not get loan for the next Kharif season, which will be starting in May and June. And that is the uh, biggest worry with the farmers, because this year's season is very worst. I think last 30 years I am doing agriculture, but this year's uh, season is very worse because there is less crop and less prices. The pink bollworm minance has uh, reduced the yield to 30% to 60%. And the prices have fallen compared to last year. 1,000 to 1,200 rupees per quintal farmer are getting less price for cotton and for soybean. So whatever Devendra Fadnaviji was saying that we will make farmers debt free. By this loan waiver, they are not going to be debt free. Because how can they repay loan when they have sold their cotton last year at 5,500 and this year at 4,500? And this question is not answered. And Sharad Pawarji is today going to lead this Allah bowl. I, I thank him and I wish him best luck. But my appeal to you is this. Sharad Pawarji was agriculture minister for this nation for last 10 years. And he knows that the loan waiver is not in the jurisdiction of the state. The prices are not in the jurisdiction of the state. So I will request through you to Sharad Pawarji to give Hallabol appeal at Parliament in New Delhi and lead the farmers movement of the country because in country the prices are same and so whole nation farmer is exploited and Modi ji has announced that we will give you 50% over the past and that promise he is not fulfilling. Modi ji talks about Ram Mandir but Raghukula Rita Sada Chali Aayi Prana Jai Par Vachana Na Jai Modi ji has given this vachan of 50% profit over cost, but he is not fulfilling. And so, ye Ram Rajya nahi hai, ye muh mein Ram aur bagal mein churi hai, aur halla bol dilli mein hona chahiye. But uh, Mr. Javandia, you know, you very rightly said that the farmers are in distress all across the country and the governments need to do more than just knee-jerk reactions announcing these farm loan waivers. Of course, you also admit that there's much more to be done if you are to uh, sort of uh, safeguard not just the future of the farmers, but the people of this country. Because ultimately, if the farmers don't have money, if they're out of business, we don't have food to eat. You're absolutely correct, sir. Actually, see, what I am constantly now saying, see, the 11th ministerial of WTO is going on in Argentina. And there the dispute is this, since last 25 years of WTO, the subsidies of American and European farmers have reduced by one cent. And our farmers are not getting any subsidies, and our farmers are asked to compete with the world market. Now, this year, 
the situation is this that there is no price in world market for any agricultural commodities oil seeds are depressed cotton is depressed pulses are depressed wheat is depressed maize is depressed all prices have fallen and those farmers are living with the state support kamal nath ji when he was commerce minister rightly said that indian farmer is not competing with the american farmer but indian farmer has to fight with the american treasury and this is being now accepted by modi government and mr prabhu ji is is contesting there to reduce subsidies of the rich countries but that success is not there and so till they reduce their subsidies now modi government has got responsibility to directly support indian farmers as they support the government employees with the seventh pay commission 5 lakh crore rupees burden is taken by seventh pay commission on the indian Uh, uh, budget. So why not Sorry. Modi ji is giving money to farmers? Why he is asking giving loan waiver by the state government? This is not in their jurisdiction. Absolutely. And he has rightly said that much more is to be done for farmers. Otherwise, this food producer Anna Data will not survive in this country. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Vijay. Thank you so much for speaking to us and joining us in the broadcast. Of course, much more that needs to be done. These knee-jerk reactions of uh, announcing farm loan waivers aren't going to solve the crisis. Thanks, Mandar, as well for joining us in the broadcast. Let's shift focus now to Tamil Nadu, where students of a government school in Tiruvallur are were made to clean toilets within the school premises. Students of standard six and twelve. were made to work on a daily basis allegedly by the headmaster of the school the parents of the students have complained of their children falling ill and finding difficulty in their studies the parents want strict action to be taken against the school management and the principal well this has been going on for a couple of months now and on routinely children were from between the grade of 6 to 12 were asked to clean the school toilets and you can see from the usuals the horrible condition of this toilets and they were asked to do it without any protective gear and due to which several of the students were falling sick were losing classes and also you can see it could reflect on their uh, and grades and exams which they were attending and the parents have asked for investigation and particularly against the school principal and the teachers who have asked the students to clean the toilets now what we hearing from the school man management this was done to create a, a kind of learned lessons uh, imitating what the school children are told and done in in japan but uh, this was a good uh, intention might be but the way it was carried out and the way that students health was completely neglected is point of question here and also the fact that the condition of this toilets was one can say not less than horrible and the students without any protective gear or without any concern for their lack of safety this government school in tiruvallur was asking students to clean the toilets and they are making them fall sick and losing their grades now the parents have demanded a strict inquiry they have written to the uh, deputy director of education they have also trying to approach the education minister to take strict action against the principal and the teachers of the well, particular government school now we heard that the parents parents and the committees are also planning to protest if no action is taken against the school principal Let's shift focus now to the U.S. Where a man inspired by the Islamic State extremists strapped on a crude pipe bomb slipped unnoticed into Manhattan subway system and set the device off in Russia. You're seeing on your screens visuals now, which are captured by surveillance cameras, which, in fact, they caught the moment of the bombing. In the end, only serious wounds were to the suspect himself. Akayad Ullah, a 27-year-old Bangladeshi immigrant and former cab driver, the attack sent terrified commuters fleeing through a smoky passageway, and three people suffered headaches and ringing ears in the blast. We are heartbroken by the violence that was targeted at our city today, and by the allegations being made against a member of our family. But we are also outraged by the behavior. of the law enforcement officials who have held children as small as 4 years old out in the cold and who pulled a teenager out of high school classes to interrogate him without a lawyer without his parents these are not the sorts of actions we expect from our justice system and we have every confidence that our justice system will find the truth behind this attack and that we will in the end be able to learn what occurred today
news just breaking here on the broadcast. Three people have died as a bus fell into a river in Peringathur near Kannur. The private bus coming from Be Bengaluru rammed into the side wall of the bridge after it lost control and fell into the river. Search operations are now underway. Well, those are uh, distressing uh, news, of course, of a bus accident which is taking place uh, in, uh, in near Kannur, in fact, in Kerala. Uh, three people have died. The bus, in fact, uh, hit a wall and then went off the side and fell into a river in Peringathur near uh, Kannur. Let's go across to Vivek, who's joining us on the phone line. Vivek, uh, give us the details. Yes, uh, three people uh, have died uh, today uh, in the early hours of the day uh, in a place called Peringatur uh, when a tourist bus uh, coming all the way from Bangalore uh, had, uh, you know, approached, uh, it was moving in a very high speed. Uh, it accidentally rammed into the side bridge of the Peringatur uh, bridge and lost control and fell into this uh, river. Uh, and uh, we understand that the, uh, three of the dead bodies have been uh, recovered, and uh, the you know uh, the operation, the search operations are still going on to find if at all uh, there was any other uh, bodies uh, still drowning in this in this river. Uh, we don't have any clear idea of how many people who are traveling in this bus. That is also not unknown. But what we understand from the sources is that uh, the bus was uh, moving in a very high speed, and it was a very narrow road. And uh, it happened in the early hours of the day. Three people who are died as identified as Prajish, Prajit and Hemalata. And uh, yes, search operations is going on as we are currently speaking now. Right, Vivek. And uh, from the pictures we can see, of course, the bus having plunged into the water. Uh, what, are the, uh, what are the kind of uh, search and rescue operations that we're seeing on the ground? Uh, have divers been also deployed by the local administration? Yes, uh, the local administration has also deployed uh, missionary over there. Around uh, 50 policemen have, arranged, uh, have reached the spot uh, by around 6 o'clock. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, other you know, uh, professional divers who are, uh, you know, uh, skilled in this particular uh, you know, search operations are also on because this river is, uh, you know, it is, the depth of this river is uh, something which is no, uh, not uh, known till now. But what we understand is there is a... It's, 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 uh, the depth is very uh, high uh, in this uh, particular river, and the Stringatur River is a, it's a it's a tributary river, and uh, it flows from uh, you know kind uh, all the way from uh, you know uh, Kaveri towards uh, you know, uh, the North Kerala. It's a huge river, and uh, also the search operations uh, earlier. You know there were some challenges because you know it was raining a bit, but now the rains have come down. And yes, uh, you know uh, what we understand from the sources is that not much people were traveling in the bus, we, but we don't know exactly how many people were traveling in the bus. Where it was some uh, four or five people, but the driver of this bus, you know, miraculously escaped, uh, and uh, he's been uh, undergone treatment at the Talasheri Cooperative Hospital. Well, absolutely, uh, Vivek. We're seeing those pictures uh, first here on this on Mirror Now. Uh, the bus, of course, hit the wall of the bridge there, and in fact, plunged into the river. Uh, you can see the, uh, in, in fact, onlookers looking at the bus uh, on the river. You, as we can see, a number of locals also trying to help out in the search and rescue. As Vivek is also pointing to us, uh, divers also being employed to try and, uh, in, in fact, find any survivors, or for that matter, rest, in fact, uh, remove the bodies from the bus. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news this hour. Please stay with Mirror now for all the latest from across the country.